Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ikra Bangla. Welcome to our very special episode of Ramadan Stories. I've got some really special guests today in the studio. Um, and before we do that, how are you? How was your Ramadan going? Inshallah, I hope you're doing well um, and trying your best. So let's meet our guests and see how they've been doing during the month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Welcome to Stories of Ramadan. Would you like to tell me your names? Takwa. Takwa, that's a lovely name. And what's your name? Riansha. Riansha. And your name? Asmail. Asmail. Ayan. Ayan. Fantastic. I think you've been on here before, haven't you? Yeah. So, how is your Ramadan going? Mm. Who wants to go first? Put your hand up if you want to say something. Anyone? I'll pick then. How's your Ramadan going, darling? Good. Good. Are you enjoying it so far? Yeah. Are you finding it difficult to wake up? Yeah, it is hard, isn't it? And how about you? Are you finding it hard to wake up? Oh. Because I want to sleep more. Because you want to sleep more, I know, it's hard. But you're still practicing, so it's okay if you're sleeping just a little bit extra. <laughs> and how about you? How is it going for you? How's Ramadan? My Ramadan is very well. It's going really well? Yeah. And what about you? Um, very. Very good. So, who can tell me what has been the best part of your Ramadan so far? What's been your best part so far of iftar. Ramadan? Iftar. That's, that's one of my best parts too, iftar. And what's, what's been your best part of Ramadan? Is it iftar as well? Mm. Yeah? Uh, have we all kind of decided iftar is our best part? That's when we get to eat all the lovely food that our family make for us. Yeah? And we're grateful for the lovely food. And talking about food and being grateful, uh, I would like to share with you today about the things that we can do in the month of Ramadan to be grateful and to show that we're caring. Yeah? Can anyone tell me what's uh, some of the things that we can do in the month of Ramadan to get more reward from Allah, more points? Yes, darling. Pray to Allah or go to the Makkah and do it. Pray to Allah or go to the Masjid and do it. Fantastic. So what we can do in the month of Ramadan is pray more, ask Allah for things that we want, or we can go to the masjid. Well done. What else can we do in the month of Ramadan? Give to those in need and um, give food to people during uh, iftar. Fantastic. That's a really good point that you made, to give food and uh, to help people, those in need. Yes, darling. To give money to charity. To give money to charity, fantastic. And that's something that we're going to talk about today, the importance of giving charity. So have you given any charity whilst you've been fasting? Did you? What did you do? Did you do something nice for somebody? Because that's an act of charity, did you know? Did you know that not just giving money is charity, but also to be kind, to give somebody something, to help somebody, is also an act of charity. So did you help anybody or give anything? What did you do? Um, for Modena, I gave everyone some money. Wow. So when you went to the mosque, did you say? Yeah. So when you went to the mosque, Ayan went to the mosque and he gave everybody money. And that's an act of charity. That's really good. You should be really pleased with yourself. How many of you have given charity this month in Ramadan when you went to the mosque? It could have been from your pocket money. It can be um, from your weekly allowance. Even if you just give a pound or just 50p, that's still charity, isn't it? Or you could give a friend a sweet if she really wanted it, and that could be a charity. Yeah, because it's an act of kindness. Also, we know in the month of Ramadan, it's really important that we have good manners, which is called what in Arabic? How do we say good manners in Arabic? Who knows? Do we know? 
is called adab. Adab in our religion, in Islam, is really important, which means we talk nicely to people, we be kind, we be respectful to our parents, our teachers, our family, our closest friends, and even our neighbours. It's so important in the month of Ramadan to show your kindness and be nice to people around you. Yeah, like for example in school, do you have anybody at school that isn't very nice? Yes, darling. You have, there's a girl in school that's not very nice. And what does she do to you that's not very nice? Being bossy. She be bossy? Oh dear, that's not very nice, is it? So, have you tried to be nice to her? And have you told her in a nice way? It's not nice to be bossy because I don't like it. Have you said that to her? No, maybe you can try and tell her that and she might change. Also, it's good to help people change, especially in the month of Ramadan. It and helps us to be nice. And she also thinks she knows everything. Does she? Oh, well, maybe you can tell her in a nice way and that's also teaching her, yeah? Okay. Glory be to Allah and praise be to Allah. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone and Allah is the greatest. So in this verse, it says glory be to Allah and none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Do you know what that means? Yes. Um, that no one else should be worshipped apart from Allah. Yep. And glory be to Allah. Do you know what that means? It means Allah is the best and he is our creator and he created us. Yes. So when he tells us to fast, we do it because we love Allah and we want to please Allah, yeah? I know you're practicing now because you're very young and Allah doesn't expect you to keep all your fast. But if you did and you took little breaks while you did it, that's okay, as long as you're trying, yeah? So also one of the other things that we're going to talk about today, as I mentioned earlier, is about charity. And charity is called sadaqa. Who knows what sadaqa is? What, what do we mean when we say sadaqa? Do you know? Yes, darling. We give money. We give money. And who do we give money to? Can you tell me? Poor people. To poor people. Who else do we give money to in the name of sadaqa? Can you tell me, darling? What, what, do, we, what do we do when we give sadaqa? Be good. Be good. Okay. So also giving sadaqa means you're being good. Fantastic. Can you tell me anything about sadaqa? For example, your experience. Have you ever given sadaqa in the month of Ramadan as you're fasting? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have given it to the masjid. To yeah. And um, people who work very hard. People work very hard, yeah. Do you mean like in other countries, in this country? Yeah. Where? Like um, in charity programs, um, places and those who work extremely hard for others. Fantastic. So you like to give charity to people that you feel really deserve it and have worked hard. And when you go to the masjid, you give charity. And have you given charity whilst you've been fasting? Um, yeah. That's really good. Fantastic. And it doesn't matter how young you are. You can give charity anywhere. Even if you give it to your parents and say, oh, hi, mom, hi, dad. Can I give you a pound when you go to the masjid? Can you please? give that on my behalf, or even when you go to the masjid with your mum and dad, you could put it in the charity box yourself. And guess what? Even if no one knows you've given charity, Allah knows. Even if you give just a pound or 50p or even 20p, Allah knows, and that's a good deed. Is that a good deed? Yes. Yeah, and why is it a good deed? Because you're helping others, yeah? So when we give charity, we do it for the intention of helping others. And that's an act of kindness, which is a good deed. And then you're rewarded for it by Allah. So I'm just going to read you something about giving charity. Ramadan is a month of gaining reward and giving in generosity. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, had no bounds and he always gave charity. So we learn from our Prophet that he always gave charity and he always wanted to seek the pleasure of Allah. So he gave lots of charity to people. And when I said to you before that charity doesn't have to be money, 
so you could give your friend a sweet and that's a good deed and a good deed is also known as an act of who knows charity very good well done whoever gives food to a fasting person to break his fast will receive the same reward as him while nothing will be reduced from the fasting person's reward so if you feed somebody um, at iftar time when they're fasting maybe it could be somebody that can't afford to buy food or it could be a relative or a neighbor and you invite them around for dinner for iftar to break their fast you would get the same amount of reward as a fasting person and that fasting person won't reduce um, won't lose their reward or anything like that doesn't that sound good yeah is that exciting oh that's really good whoever helps in breaking the fast of another person or helps in the preparation of the person who leaves to fight in the way of Allah will get a reward equal to that of a person who has helped so in that text um, they talk about fighting the way of Allah so that would be more about defending our faith and our religion um, another thing that we're going to talk about today is Umrah has anybody been to Umrah and who knows what Umrah is? Can anyone tell me? Yes. Umrah is when you go to Mecca to do seven laps around the Seven Kaaba. laps around the Kaaba. And what, what is, um, where is Mecca? In Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, very good. So Umrah is when you go and do seven rounds around the Kaaba. Yes, darling. How did the Kaaba got built? The, the, yes, darling. By, by two, by, by one prophet and his dad. Fantastic. So the Kaaba was built by our prophet, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Have you been to see the Kaaba? Have you? Oh, wow. Who did you go with? Did uh, you go with your dad and your mum? My friends. Well, and your friends. Oh, wow. That's so exciting. Yes, so you mentioned earlier, sorry darling, what was your name? Asmail. Asmail, you mentioned that you went to um, Umrah. Did you go with your parents? And my brother and some friends. Your brother and some friends. So what was your experience like at such a young age to have the privilege to go to Mecca and do Umrah? How did you feel about that? It was extremely emotional because it was really beautiful. Um, I learned lots of new stories going around everywhere. Yeah. And it was, it, I really loved it. You really loved it. I had it. a really great time. That is fantastic. And was you tired? Did you, did you feel like, at any point, did you feel like, oh no, I can't do this, I can't carry on? Yeah. It yeah. was extremely tiring. It was extremely tiring. But then do you, do you, how do you feel now that you've completed it? Um, I feel extremely proud. I'm really happy that I've completed Umrah. And I hope that Allah accepts my Umrah. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma amin. Inshallah. That's really inspir inspirational. Um, the fact that you're so young and you went to Umrah, and you had these feelings and you enjoyed and you embraced all that goodness from Mecca um, is, is really good and really inspiring. And I hope you can be inspired too. And you can go to Umrah at any age um, to learn, to gain knowledge and also to get reward from Allah. So thank you for sharing your story. Um, in Ramadan, Umrah, um, which is called pilgrimage, we deeply desire to visit the house of Allah. Every believer this year will perform a major and minor pilgrimage called Hajj and Umrah. During the month of Ramadan, the reward of offering Umrah becomes equivalent to performing Hajj. So if you do Umrah, it's as though you performed a full Hajj. That's, the, um, that's how important it is and how much reward um, Allah gives you for doing Umrah. The evidence of this is found in the following tradition so it's narrated um, in a passage where uh, we have the reference to that where if you perform Umrah it's rewarded as a full Hajj okay darling have any of you been to Mecca do you know where Mecca is yes Saudi Arabia. it's in Saudi Arabia and would you like to go to Saudi Arabia yes. yeah wouldn't it be exciting so what kind of clothes do people wear when they go to Umrah? Can you give us a little idea mm. what they do, what they wear? Where did they, you start? Scarf. Hmm? Scarf. 
the golf? Scarf. Scarf, yes, that's right. Can you tell me, as you had an experience in Umrah? We, the boys have to wear a white ihram, like they have to put it around and what, the body. And what's a white ihram? Does anybody know what a white ihram is? It's a cloth that um, our Prophet said to wear during the process of... Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So Sorry. ihram is a white cloth that men will wrap around them. Um, you're not allowed to wear anything else. And is, is that the only item you're allowed to wear? Yeah. Yeah. So the white clothing is called ihram. Yeah. And then what else did you do? So after you put your ihram on, what do you do then? Do you make a vow? Do you make an intention? Your niyyah? Is that what you have to do? Yeah. Do you want to tell us about it? After we wore it, we did wudu and we went on the plane and we had our journey to go to uh, Mecca and yeah. we did our uh, pilgrimage. And, yeah. Yeah. So do you wear the ihram before you board the aeroplane? Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. That's really interesting to know. Um, and what was one of the uh, best things that you enjoyed? And what was one of the perhaps least things that you enjoyed? Um, I really hated walking a lot because it was really tiring. Yeah. But I enjoyed listening to lots of stories, yeah. knowing a lot about our prophets and it was extremely interesting. So gaining knowledge for you was your positive part of your journey. Yeah. And, and, and walking wasn't... <laughs> I know, no, nobody likes walking. And especially when you're fasting, it's, it's difficult. But then that comes down to patience, sabr. Patience and sabr is so important in the month of Ramadan. And the fact that you did that, you did something that you didn't want to do. Do you see how that goes back to patience? So for your patience, Allah will reward you for that because you did something that you didn't you know, want to do, which was walking. So that's really good, alhamdulillah. Well done, you should be proud of yourself. And you girls, what did you do to be patient this Ramadan? Can you share a story with us? Something you did like, maybe um, you were told to do something by your parents and you didn't want to do it, or you really wanted a toy. Is there any stories you want to share about being patient? Did you do anything at home? No. Have you got younger brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah? And did they maybe take one of your favourite toys that you really wanted to play with? No? Do you generally share with each other? Well, that's really good. That's fantastic. Also, another um, subject that I want to discuss with you today. Who knows about Al-Qadr? Who knows about Laylatul Qadr? I'll tell you. So what that means, it's, it's called the night of decree. And in Arabic, it's called Laylatul Qadr. You're a little bit older than them, so you might know about that. Have you learned about that, Laylatul Qadr? Um, it's, I think it's when you pray at night and we, you pray a lot because that's the time when angels come to your house. Fantastic. So Laylatul Qadr, yes, darling. I only know one time when you can pray and say some duas. Really, what time is that? Raining and travelling. Raining and travelling, that's fantastic. And that's really important too. We mustn't forget, whenever we're travelling or when it's raining, when the weather is bad, we say our dua. That's really good, thank you. So Laylat al-Qadr, I'm going to tell you now, is called the night of decree. And that's a really special night for us as believers. Now that you've been fasting, it's really important that you know there's one night called Laylat al-Qadr, which... Allah sends down all his angels and he comes down from the heavens and he asks everyone. You can't hear him, but he's already asking everyone, what would you like? And what would you like to wish for? So on that special night, it's really important that you pray and you ask Allah for anything you like. So it could be a special toy, it could be a special prayer. Whatever you like, you can ask for on that night. Um, and Allah will answer your prayer, inshallah. So Laylatul Qadr is a special night where we can make lots of wishes. Does that sound good? Oh, Allah is very kind, isn't he? He's the most merciful. So as we approach the last 10 days of Ramadan, it's really important to stay focused and be strong and remember why you're fasting and just be grateful to Allah for giving us this special blessed month of Ramadan that's going to help us to change bad habits, 
uh, maybe we can visit our relatives more often, maybe we can visit our neighbours, give in charity to the poor and the needy, especially those that have been affected by earthquakes, um, by really dangerous weathers and calamity. So even in the month of Ramadan, if we are practicing these things, it's so important that we practice to be good even after the month of Ramadan, isn't it? Boys and girls, yeah? Is it important to be good even after the month of Ramadan finishes? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really good, isn't it? Anytime. Anytime, very good. So we should be good and kind anytime, especially now that we've practiced and we've learned lots of um, good deeds and we've learned how to be kind to each other and how to give charity. We have to continue that even after when Ramadan finishes, we can still try and be better people and just be nice to each other. And remember, you're doing it all for the sake of Allah. So we're doing all this just so Allah can be happy with us and be good to your parents. That's really important. If you're fasting and you be rude to your mum, to your mummy and your daddy, that's not good. So you have to be good to your parents, listen to them, yeah? And you listen to your friends and your family. And if you're upset about something, you can talk about it. Instead of getting angry or being annoyed, which I know we all can get annoyed and angry, can't we? Yeah? So let's be good and enjoy the rest of our Ramadan, inshallah. And I hope you have a lovely iftar. Thank you so much, viewers, for joining me. Inshallah, enjoy your iftar and the rest of your Ramadan. Please keep us in your du'as, inshallah, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.